Okay. Don't know if it's on there yet, but anyway, it does say that we're live. So, howdy folks, we're here today with talking with one of the uh, great western novels. Uh, his name is Tom Rizzo. And uh, we have a few questions for you, Tom. Uh, how are you doing? Right. How are you doing this morning? So far, so good. Good. Beautiful morning. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, you've recently purchased a revi uh, a revised version of your first novel, Last Stand at Bitter Creek. Tell us something about how uh, uh, about that story. Okay, uh, Last Stand at Bitter Creek is a uh, historical adventure novel that takes place uh, after the Civil War, right after the Civil War. The uh, main character is a burned-out Union Army spy who discovers a complicated conspiracy of, uh, oh, what they should call it, betrayal and deception, which involves a, a $2 million gold heist, uh, a cold-blooded massacre of a detachment of U Union soldiers, and the theft of a, a priceless U.S. historical document. And uh, because of all this, he gets ambushed because he knew too much, struggles to recover and to pursue the mastermind behind the, uh, the entire thing. And it's essentially a story of revenge and redemption. Okay. Let's see, I'm trying to... Okay, um, so it's a story of uh, redemption, right? Yeah, revenge and redemption. Revenge yeah. and, and, and dimension. Uh, redemption. Redemption, sorry about that. Right. Um, yeah. Um, do you know exactly about how far along that this is? Like, like what uh, decade it was? Yeah, 19th century, it'd be the 18, uh, around 1886, 1880. From then on, it takes place over the span of a few years. And uh, the setting moves from oh, the hills of Pennsylvania and ends up in uh, Wyoming in a small frontier town, which is Bitter Creek. Okay. Um, whereabouts is Bitter Creek at? It is in Wyoming. There is was an actual Bitter Creek, ironically, and it's still there. But the only thing there is a uh, railroad siding, and that's it. Not much else. Okay. Um. Now, how long uh, has this idea been developing before you started the novel? Well, it's kind of interesting. I, I kind of backed into the whole thing. Uh, years ago, I read a short paragraph. It must have been more, not more than five lines about the first peacetime robbery, railroad robbery in the United States. Uh, it took place in North Bend, Ohio, which is just outside Cincinnati. And if you Google train robbery, you'll find, first of all, the Reno brothers robbed an Ohio and Mississippi train on October 6th, 1886, it marked the first time a uh, moving train was stopped and robbed, and the Pinkertons happened to solve that case. However, the Ohio and, uh, and, Ohio and Mississippi train was uh, robbed on May 5th, 1865, which is about a year before that, and they were built outside North Bend. Uh, I wrote an article about it, and it was published in Wild West Magazine in uh, October 1995, I believe. This case was never solved. So a few years later, I had the thing rolling around in my head, and I thought, since it was never solved, you know, what if something on that train was being transported, the valuable cargo, for example, that nobody knew about? So I just took the what-if scenario and went from there. Well, that sounds very interesting. I'm sure, uh, I'm, fun. I'm sure you had a difficult time trying to do all the research. Uh, how difficult was that research? You know, there was a lot of research, uh, primarily because, uh, you know, there are historical incidents involved. There are three actual historical incidents blended into the story. Uh, but learning about this particular period of history, 
I had to find out really and educate myself about how people lived, how they worked, what they wore, how they traveled, what they ate, uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of it I never used, of course, but it, uh, I needed to do a lot of research to give me a sense of time and place, for example. But uh, it was, it was I think the danger you get into is writing something like this of an historical nature. You get involved in a lot of research, and the key is not dumping it all in the story because nobody really cares. But they care about the action and the story itself and the resolution. So but there was a lot of research involved, but uh, you know, enough to make it come. You know, how far did the horse travel, for example, without falling over, so to speak? Yeah. So, yeah. A lot of research did go into it. You know, they probably went through a lot of difficult times back in those days. Uh, it, it, you know, I think it's it's hard to imagine how many people uh, had to go through some of the difficult uh, trials and tribulations that they that they have. Um, oh, a difficult time, definitely. Okay, so uh, you know what uh, what do you what do you want the readers to uh, take with them after they finish the novel? Oh, good question. I think that uh, I'd like people to have a reaction that, wow, what a great story. When's the next one? And where is exactly. it? You know, I want to read this guy again. <laughs> exactly. You know, uh, I have a picture of you right behind me here of uh, posting that you have like four books. Is that correct? Yeah, I've got The Last Stand that Bitter Creek is the novel, and then I wrote uh, three nonfiction. Um, it's a series. It's about outlaws. It's about lawmen and about what I call the unexpected kind of offbeat stories about the West. And they're all about two or three pages maximum. They're very quick reads. And uh, I did those last year. So uh, what I, and I, they're a little similar to my blog that I do. Uh, mostly every other day or so. Uh, just quick, true stories about the West. Uh, no fiction, it's all true. These great characters of the West and events that took place. And so that's, and that's what that book is. It's, three, it's a, a three-series volume of all those, all those different stories. Exactly. So, um, I guess here's, here's kind of like an off-the-wall question is, uh, how do you come up with your characters in in the uh, in the novels that you write? That's, that's funny. I'm, uh, that's probably the you know trying to put together a plot first of all, and then you know, fitting the characters in there. Obviously, the main character you want to be a strong protagonist that has a certain goal in mind. That uh, you know, what's his motivation for? going through life, essentially, is what you're trying to do. And then, then my favorite kind of character to write is the, uh, the antagonist, the uh, evil kind of a guy um, who will stop at nothing to get what he wants. And uh, I heard a lot of uh, comments about the uh, antagonist in this one, the villain, if you will, by the name of um, Marcus Steele. And he's a greedy guy with a criminal mind. He's a former... Union officer, and a lot of contempt for other people, including his own wife. And uh, his attitude towards him or towards her is a bit blood curdling. And he's the um, kind of—I I guess somebody told me it was the kind of villain that uh, people often found in early westerns. Uh, an ambitious man intent on getting rich quick by any means, and uh, you know, using different schemes to get into public office achieve more power so those are always fun characters to write <laughs> right um, <laughs> I, I'm sure you have a, a great deal of adventure with with the novels that you write and and it probably takes a great deal of time to uh, to put a novel together most of your novels that, that you write uh, can you tell the audience about how many pages some of these are well uh, I've only written one the novel, the fiction, and uh, I'm in the middle of probably halfway through the second one. Uh, but the, the, the novel, Last Stand of Bitter Creek, is about, oh, 280 pages approximately. Wow. Um, 
it's about, you know, in terms of words, it's probably about 70,000 words from what it was. Uh, I think our version is actually 270 pages around there. So, uh, but there, you know, full novels. And this one has a lot of different characters. Probably in my second novel won't have as many characters, but there are multiple viewpoints in Last Stand for Bitter Creek. You gotta get inside the head of uh, different characters along the way. Right. And I did that on you know, purpose to kind of give a sense of time and place what's going on inside somebody's head as far as motivation. Right. Okay, well, uh, how has your uh, background influence influenced your writing? Well, most of my life I've worked as a writer. I worked at radio and TV as a uh, news reporter. Spent several years as a correspondent with the Associated Press. And then after that, did a lot of freelance writing. I a contributing editor to a city magazine. Wrote a column for a national business magazine. <laughs> managed and edited really a financial newspaper um, for about a year and a half and did a lot of magazine articles and advertising and promotional copy for business. So um, but I've just spent a lot of time with writing since I was a kid. I was a grade school kid actually. Wow. So, a lot of a lot of hours. So you do have a lot of years. Yeah. So you okay. do have a great deal of experience in, in uh and dealing with that kind of kind of thing, and you know, uh, I guess uh, you can tell everyone how they can get in touch with you and uh, how they can uh, get a copy of your novels that you have. Okay, uh, probably the best place to start is my website, which is tomrizzo.com. And there you'll find everything, the law, the blogs, the books, the descriptions of the books, uh, where to buy them. I mean, they're published on, um, all those books are published on Amazon, Apple, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Ascribe, anywhere really, any bookstores online. And, um, uh, and that's probably the best place to start, really. Uh, that and, you know, if you want a quick description, go to Amazon. They have everything there as well. And now, on my, yeah, and on my website, you'll find, uh, if, you, if you want to subscribe to my occasional newsletter, uh, there's a place to do that. If you do that, you get a free book, which you can download immediately called, uh, uh, <laughs> don't, don't tell me, it's a free book. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so I'm pretty sure some of that's uh, kind of hard to remember all the time, but uh, anyway. Well, this book is this this book is about called When the Smoke Clears. It's a uh, gunslingers and gunfighters of the old west. It's about oh gosh, uh, hundred some pages of uh, the main, the biggest gunfight gunfights in the old west over the years. It's about forty two of them. That uh, again, are about two or three page uh, snapshots of these gunfights and. And they're all true stories, so that's yeah. about, I'd say about 110 pages or so. Cool, cool. Um, well, I just wanted to thank you, Tom, for uh, joining us here at How the Old West Was, and want to uh, congratulate you on, on your uh, book that you, your new release of your book that you have. Um, we want to hope that everybody is going to be able to... Uh, Go to your sites, look you up, try to find you, uh, get your books and read them. Uh, all you people out there, uh, he has he has some really good knowledge about what he's doing and, and how he's uh, writing his novels. Uh, so Tom, we want to thank you for joining us here at How the Old West Was, a uh, live video feed show that we got going. And you guys uh, stay tuned for our next show, our next episode, which is going to be Pawn Stores and Trading Post. Thank you again, Tom, for for joining us. Thank you. Here at How the Thank you very much. Okay, you have a okay. great day, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.